Scampi means a lot of things all over the world. Here in the States, it generally means shrimp with garlic and butter. I'm going to show you a very simple version of it served with rice that my dad taught me. Then I'm going to show you a slightly more elaborate version of it that I do with pasta. Both versions use my dad's secret ingredient. I almost always buy my shrimp frozen. It's cheaper, the quality is more reliable, and they thaw very fast. I'm just submerging them in plenty of lukewarm water from the tap. If you're in a hurry, you could change this water once or twice or leave the faucet trickling, but shrimp are so so small that these will thaw in like 20 minutes with no further attention from me. During which time I'll get my rice started. This is how I usually do white rice, this is not how my dad taught me. Basically I start it like risotto. A little butter in a hot pan, then in goes a cup of jasmine rice, which has really nice flavor, and then I just move it around and toast it in the pan for a minute. I have not rinsed this rice. Maybe I'm in the minority, but most of the time I actually want my rice to be clumpy, not fluffy. Okay, in goes one and a half cups of water to one cup rice. I tend to like the firmer, drier texture that you get by being conservative with the water. I'll mix in a big pinch of salt and immediately turn the heat down to a low simmer and cover it. That's ample rice for two people. I'm making two portions of the rice scampi and two portions of the pasta scampi. Now, vegetable prep. I'm peeling and chopping half a head of garlic. That's a lot of garlic for two portions, but that's what scampi means to me. You could use less. Now, here's Dad's secret ingredient, celery leaves. They are so good. Whenever I buy celery, I look for the stalks that have the most leaves still on them. It's basically just a fresh herb that tastes strongly of celery without having the celery texture that some people, such as my wife, find objectionable. I'm just roughly chopping a nice big bunch so that I have kind of equal piles of garlic and celery leaves. Shrimp is thawed. Here's a plate covered in paper towels to hold my peeled shrimp. They cook better when they're dry. And you can see here that these are quote-unquote de-veined but unpeeled shrimp. That's usually my preferred way to get them. The processor has cut off the heads and then cut down the back of the shrimp, thus making them much easier easier to peel. The big question is whether you want to bother trying to get the shell off of the tail. A lot of people are happy to just leave them on and then eat around them on the plate. I prefer to try to get it off. You kind of have to pinch the tail shell at the very end and gingerly slide it off without accidentally tearing off the meat inside it. 10% of the time, I fail, but I would rather sacrifice a little bit of meat than have to worry about shells when I'm eating. Ah, there, you can see the vein that we're talking about. It's of course not a vein at all, but the shrimp's intestinal tract, containing remnants of its last meal. Even if the bag says devein, there's usually some shrimp in there that still have it. It's gross to think about, but it's not really a problem. People eat the vein all the time. It's not really perceivable, and it's not dangerous. It's mostly silt. Now, when you're done, you can just pour out the water and then do yourself a favor and throw those shells directly into your compost or outdoor trash. Shrimp shells can stink up a kitchen real fast. So that's a pound of shrimp, enough for at least four people. I might dab them with another paper towel just to get them as dry as possible. You can see my rice here has been done for a while. It only takes like 15 minutes, but I always get it going early as possible because I prefer rice after it's just kind of rested on warm for a long time. All right, pan for the shrimp goes on medium heat, and I'll melt in just a little bit of butter to start with. We're going to put in more butter later. This is just enough for getting the shrimp cooked through. When the butter is good and hot, I'll dump in half a pound of shrimp, enough for two big portions, and I'm making sure that they're all in one layer and lying flat. My dad lays them in one by one, which is probably smarter. Shrimp cooks incredibly fast, two to five minutes total, depending on their size. I reckon these will take four minutes. When the first side is visibly cooked, when it's changed color, I will flip them around. Dad flips them one at a time with tongs. My approach is admittedly more chaotic. I'm not seasoning these, by the way, because I'm using salted butter and shrimp are naturally salty anyway. When the shrimp have just gone opaque all the way through, I will remove them to a plate. If you had a wider pan than I do, you could maybe just push them all to the sides, but this will make it all but impossible to overcook them. Then in goes more butter, I'd say at least a tablespoon per portion. The butter is the sauce for this. Get it melting and then throw in the garlic. Move it all around and get it cooking for a sec just to soften the pieces and to take the edge off the flavor. Then in goes the celery leaves and the shrimp. You could put in some pepper, but if you're using salted butter like I am, you probably don't want any additional salt. Get everything coated and then take the pan off the heat. Cover the plate with rice. I love my rice a little clumpy like that. Maybe make a little well in the center to hold the shrimp and then shovel in the shrimp, being sure to get any of the loose garlic butter that might still be in the pan. There you go. One of the first things my dad taught me how to cook. The flavor of those celery leaves goes so well with shrimp, and they look pretty. 
You can squeeze on some lemon over that if you want. I'm gonna show you in a sec how I've tried to advance this recipe a little bit, but this is a totally solid, easy weeknight meal. Plus, it's quite cheap if you look for shrimp that are on sale. And getting the best deal on anything online is crazy easy with the sponsor of this video, Honey. Honey is a free browser extension that automatically finds you the best promo codes whenever you're shopping online. It knows I'm using Chrome, so it sends me straight to the Chrome extension, takes two clicks to install for free. Now I will get the best deals possible when shopping at Amazon, eBay, Target, Grubhub, almost anywhere you could think of. You can either shop normally and then use Honey to look for coupon codes when you are checking out online, or you can search for stuff right from joinhoney.com. Like I want to do a video in the springtime out on a shrimping boat off the Georgia coast. Amazing shrimp out there. I want to get a drone for that shoot and look at these crazy savings Honey is finding for me. I could buy right now, or since I don't need this right away, I can ask Honey to notify me if and when the price drops any further. Further. Look, there's literally no reason to not use Honey for everything you buy online. It's free to use and installs in just two clicks. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash ragusia. That's joinhoney.com slash ragusia. Okay, here's where I've taken my dad's scampi recipe. I start with the same half head of garlic and an equivalent pile of chopped celery leaves for two big portions. I've got some water on the boil for pasta, and I've got my super deep Chrissy Teigen pan for the shrimp. You need something big enough to toss the pasta and the shrimp together in. Medium high heat on the pan and then olive oil, not butter. I don't want to just cook the shrimp, I want to brown the shrimp, and butter might burn at this higher temperature. When it's hot, in goes half a pound of shrimp, again making sure that they're all more or less flat and in one layer. I find the timing works perfectly if I get the shrimp in and then put in my linguine, which will take about 12 minutes in salted boiling water. Yes, I break my pasta in half, my dad breaks it, his Italian mother broke it, it just makes long pastas easier to eat, but you do you. Now, shrimp, like any meat, tastes amazing when it gets browned, but people rarely cook it that far because they're afraid of overcooking the shrimp and turning them into rubber. My solution to this problem is to cook the shrimp really hot and like 80% of the way on one side. I'm only browning side a. You can really smell the browning by the time they're ready to flip, and when I flip after about three minutes, I use a wooden spoon to scrape them up off the pan. They'll be stuck. Then I'll just move them around and let the rest of each shrimp finish cooking through via steam or direct heat for like another minute, then remove them to the plate. Might want to turn that heat down, and then real quick, before the fond burns, in goes the garlic. Just fry that for a minute, then deglaze with white wine. I'd guess that's maybe half a cup. I'm also going to squeeze in a little lemon, just a few drops, or more if you really like lemon. And then I'm going to reduce this almost dry, or au sec as the French say, because my goal here is to make a crude beurre blanc sauce. That's an emulsion of melted butter and reduced white wine and or vinegar or lemon juice. If you wanted to avoid the white wine, my advice is always water spiked with white balsamic vinegar. You have to cool the pan down before you put in the butter, otherwise it will break. The bubbling should be almost over. My heat's off, and that's ready. People usually mix in a few little chunks of butter at a time, because if you introduce the butter too fast, again, the emulsion will break. The fat will just separate out. But I find that if you put in one giant chunk of cold butter, it's going to melt really slowly because of the low surface area. I'm doing four tablespoons of butter. That's two per portion. Just mixing constantly and letting it melt in the residual heat of the pan. We're going to toss our pasta in there, and I have found that the heat of the pasta can be enough to break this sauce. So what I do these days is put in a tiny little pinch of my new best friend in the kitchen, xanthan gum. You can get this in the baking aisle of grocery stores now. It's an amazing stabilizer and thickener. If you try to dissolve it into water, it clumps up horribly, but it dissolves smoothly into fat. This is melted butter. You can see the powder dissolves right into that, even though butter is like 15% water. So for a mostly fat sauce like beurre blanc, you can just drop in a pinch, and that is going to make this sauce just bulletproof. It will not break. I like some chili flakes in there for heat, and also some black pepper. Really no additional salt, again, because I'm using salted butter. Pasta is now done, and I'm pouring off some of the water, but not all. I'd say a quarter cup of that water is an essential ingredient in my sauce. In goes the pasta with that little bit of water, and I'll start stirring it in. I find that if the sauce looks a little bit too loose and soupy at this stage, then it's going to be perfect by the time I actually eat it. In goes those delicious celery leaves and the shrimp. I just want to heat both back up again and get them integrated. I don't want to cook them anymore. Eh, I think I want some more chili flakes. 
And there you go. Tongs are usually best for getting this kind of thing out onto a plate because you can use them to grab any straggler shrimp. Some people have rules against mixing shellfish with cheese. Not just religious rules, but I mean culinary rules, which to many Italians are basically like religion. I don't know, a little grated pecorino tastes real good on this to me, but you do you. That sauce is so delicious, and the xanthan gum takes all the stress out of it. It also improves the texture, I think. Real smooth. Dad's celery leaf trick is, of course, genius, and look at the color on that shrimp. When I first figured out that I could brown shrimp without overcooking it, that was a game changer for me. So, Dad's version or my version? Take your pick and dig in.